Welcome to Cross Platform Podcast, where we discuss how to solve productivity problems across platforms. I'm Augusto Pinot. And I'm Mark Gelwix. And today we're talking about what you do with the reference and the not reference and all that information that we may or may not need or maybe want to have or maybe don't know what to do and where it should contain. Should we go very complex? Should we keep it very simple? One tool or multiple tools? And the idea, of course, as always, is how this will survive in a multi-platform world. Yeah, this is that dilemma of, is there one tool for all things, or do you need to find a specific tool for each specific requirement? Uh, we've never heard of a good answer to that. At least I've never heard of one. And I've never been able to provide one because the answer has always been, it depends. So I think today what we'll do is we're going to explore a little bit as to, is it feasible to put everything in one tool? What are you willing to give up? How do you make that estimate? Uh, and what are some of the limitations and some of the thoughts around it? So Augusta, I know you use a lot of different tools, but would you ever consider using one tool for all things? I don't have things on one tool. So I'm going to say no. Um, I made, I will say that I keep things in mostly three tools. Part of them, when, when they are PDFs and I want to annotate them, they live on an application called GoodNotes where all my PDFs that I annotate leave. Why? Because I can search. The second tool that I have is Apple Notes. And the reason of Apple Notes is synchronized everywhere. I can access them into the browser if I need to. And basically that make that I can find them anywhere, regardless of the device, even regardless if the device is an Apple device or not. And the third tool for me is Dropbox. And I think there are two things important to mention. When you go from a GTD perspective, you know, David Allen used to say, or said still, I don't know, that you should not mix actionables to non-actionables. And that was the way to justify if you have a project and next actions, keep it in a place. And if you have reference material, keep it in a different place. But most of the people that I work with, most of their reference materials are digital now. Okay? There is a few people that I work that in 2024, they have a heavy paper. You know, and when you think on the first book, 2001, 20 years ago, most of the people at that time were having physical paper. Okay, the folder for the in was a red folder, the recommendation. I still have it right there. Okay, but now how much paper comes in my life? It's really, really tiny. Most of what I get in my world is digital. And that's when I think the game has changed. The second thing in the last 20 years, we went from maybe having a computer Okay, some people have a desktop at home, maybe a desktop at work, to now have a powerful computer 24-7 in our pockets. Right? Even kids have a little computer, very powerful, in their pockets. Regardless if you know how to use them or not, is it still a very com powerful computer? Additionally, most of the input you get, you will get it via text via email. So I think that has changed a lot, that equation of the pen. And for me, the question is, where do you need to access this information? And the answer I get the most is anywhere. And the moment you go anywhere, then the rule of the game changed to one thing. How easy 
is to make a search for this information. Yeah, see, this is where I've thought about this quite a bit, and I always struggle with things like you know file storage. File storage has always been a hang up because where do you where should you keep your files? There are there are better recommendations than, for example, storing all your files into Notion, which is a terrible idea in my book. Uh, when you start to think about your handwritten notes, your digital notes, uh, your data entries, your task items, it naturally pushes itself to solutions that are much better at doing those individual jobs. But I realized the more that I pondered this, that what we should be talking about really is one central navigation system, access point, one place that you can connect to, or at least link from, to all of these other resources. Because our, at least for myself, the biggest challenge that I get into is I'll put stuff in different locations, but then I have to remember, well, what's in what location? You know, I file storage again, I'll go back and talk about that. I've got about three different cloud-based file stores and they're all, they're all very well used and they're all very heavily used. But that means that I have three different stores to go through and bounce around to have a central system that provides that connection that provides the index and the access to be able to see, okay, I put this over here. doesn't mean that that's in the system. It means that it's available, the information and the knowledge as to where it is, is in that central system. And I think that's where these types of things can really start to work. Now we can get into a hangup of where people will say, well, they should all be integrated together. They should all have APIs. We should be able to embed everything. And I think that's impractical in a lot of cases, just because a lot of these tools are actually closed gardens as compared to being open, you know, open fields for things mm -hmm. to interconnect. But when we look at things like, if we think about it, <laughs> old school, you go into a library, think about the card catalogs that used to be in the library. You didn't keep every book in the card catalog. You put, you kept enough information in the card catalog to be able to find the right book when you needed it. And that's, to me, that's what the central system needs to be. It needs to be that repository of knowledge or connections to make information available to you wherever you need it, whenever you need it. So, and that brings me to why my system lives on the way. Many years back, um, one of the rules that I put is that your application need to allow me to export that information. So if I move to any software my first question is how easy can i get out of this software and how easy can i keep my information accessible if i leave this piece of software why because i went through myself as well as clients getting now information grading to these things but they can't pull it out so now they are tied to that application even if something better comes. The second criteria for me is speed. How fast can I find this information? And that's part of the reason my things, many of my notes live on Apple Notes. Is perfect? No, but I can access from any device, Windows, it's, it's a really cross-platform solution. Okay, doesn't matter what it is. I just need to go to a browser, access iCloud, and I have all my notes. Second, I can add search information. So for example, if I want to look at the intro of cross-platform, fine, I can type cross-platform and it will search every note with that, or I can type intro, or I can do tags, or I can add words because sometimes our vocabulary evolves. So we begin calling something one way and over time you start calling it something different. And it's very hard when you need to think, okay, how is that I used to call that thing? Now I can add that very, very easy, that keyword and I will find it. You know, I have 
things like goals, dreams, ideas. You know, you can search ideas in my notes, you will find access to a ridiculous amount of things. Okay. Why? Because that's a keyword that I use for a really long time. So it is important for me to access those. Um, when we think about checklist, I have checklist that has 20 years that has just been evolved. Do I want to recreate it? No. Do I want to find it? Yes. So there is a keyword called checklist. Doesn't matter if the theme is called books to read. At the bottom of that thing, there is a keyword called checklist. So I can type checklist and it will bring all this information. So that's for flat or mostly flat information. In notes, you can put pictures if you want to, uh, but that's very useful. Um, for example, I do quotes from the Kindle. Okay, I read a lot. I read in the Kindle and I have an application that extract anything that I highlight and dump it into my notes. Why? Because sometimes I start thinking, geez, which book did I read this? Or I think on a, or something that I know I read somewhere, but where? And I want to quote it or I want to recommend the book. Okay. These are the kind of powerful things that I like to do. And I can go in there and search and it will bring me that quote. If I remember enough about the idea, I will find it. That for me is very, very powerful. What do not go into notes? PDF that I want to annotate. Okay, PDF that I want to read. PDF that do not contain flat information they go into an application for me called good notes and it's perfect no it's now limited to only ios or mac but it can search it can search my handwriting that i consider that you know a miracle not a feature because my handwriting is awful but the thing can mostly recognize what i wrote so that make it an incredible incredible power for thing. The, except, the third exception that I have for this is passwords. Passwords leaves in one password and information that has that sensitivity leave also in one password. One password has a thing that you can put notes. So if you give me, you know, for example, I manage some of the stuff for my parents, so all that it contain inside of that information as an additional security feature. But other than that, really everything lives in there. That's whatever information you ask me, I know those are the three places where it's going to be. And being the criteria reasonably defined, okay? If you ask me for an information that I consider confidential, I'm not even going to search notes. I know it's on one password. And same thing, if you ask me for, hey, can you forward me that PDF thing? I know exactly what it is by clients and I can find it very, very quick. Good notes allow me to create unlimited notebooks. So I have notebooks for clients and or projects, depending how large is a project. Not every project it's worth it to have their own notebook. Some of them are just inside of a notebook, but some of them are. And I can go back and see all the notes, all the PDF, all the evidence, everything in a PDF that I can search in seconds. So you brought up a couple of things that, that I want to dig into a little bit, and that's the accessibility and the searchability. Um, three examples just off the top of my head. One is email. One is web pages. And one is calendar entries. So let's start with email. So email is a challenge that I've always dealt with. It's always been a, a problematic beast because stuff comes into your email and it lives, it has a tendency to live there. I know inbox zero is a thing. I've never done it and I've never believed in it. If it works for you, more power to you. I think that's fantastic. Um, I don't have that. And I came to the realization actually very recently that I really only have two types of email. 
I have email that I'm going to reply to and email I'm not going to reply to. And if I use that criteria, it really narrows down what I need to do with every piece of email that comes in. If it's a piece of email that I need to reply to, it's going to live in my email. It's going to go into a folder. It's going to do something. It may just sit in the inbox. It doesn't matter. Until it gets replied to, it's going to sit there. Why? Because the reply is going to go through that tool. It's going to go through email. It has to have that functionality. Everything else that comes into the inbox, if it's a receipt, if it's an email notification, uh, if it's a flyer, if it's an update, whatever, it doesn't need to live in the inbox because mm -hmm. that's not the place I'm going to be accessing from from that point forward. So what I've gotten into the habit of is I access my email primarily through the browser. Matter of fact, I've, I'm doing more and more of my work just through the browser. And I'll explain why in a little bit. But being able to do that, I can use a web clipper to actually send that email now, the information about it, who, who sent it to me, all the details, into my primary system. One click, primary system, and then I hit archive. Done. Yeah, theoretically, I could probably de delete it too, but Email doesn't cost me any space you know, or a negligible amount of space. So I just hit archive and it disappears and I don't think about it anymore. It's gone. If I should ever need the original, that little goblin inside me who doesn't want to throw out anything knows that it's in the archive if I ever need it. But that to me, it has become a very streamlined mechanism of being able to handle this stuff. Now, email is on the flip side of calendar. Another thing that I've always fought with, because calendar is one of those things where things have to go. Other people don't put things on my calendar. I'm the only one who puts things on my calendar. So using that consistently and effectively, if that's going to happen, that's on me. So being able to go into my calendar and add things in, again, I had to evaluate, well, what's the purpose of my calendar? Well, the purpose of my calendar is to avoid conflicts. It's to keep me aware of what's coming up and to keep any information that I need for those very specific things. So I know that when that very specific thing happens and I get reminded, I can get from there back to the information I need for that event. So using the calendar just for that, yeah that's a separate tool. Why? Because the tool that does that does it very well. However, that calendar is available through my, I'll say my digital card catalog. I can look at my dashboard and see my calendar at any time. Am I updating it through that dashboard? No, it's just to make me aware of what's going on. And the last one, let's see, I said email, I said calendar. Uh, what was the other thing I said? I need to take notes. I forget what was the other thing. I and said. archive them. But, well, yes, and archive them. Um, oh, web pages. That that was the yep. other thing. Because the thing that I've done away with completely is bookmarking web pages or adding to favorites. I don't do either one of them. Why? Because I never use them once they go in there. I never go through the files. I never go through the filters. Yep. That, no, that, they're useless to me there. Where they are useful is in my central repository to be able to go then and take those bookmarks and, and take that page that includes the link to the origin and includes an image and includes the copy from that page and be able to then categorize it and tag it and sort it and group it and provide keywords and provide text descriptions. So now I'm creating my own index. And yes, you could probably re-Google anything that's in my system. Absolutely. But that's not why I'm capturing it. That's not why it's there from a functional standpoint. So being able to say, does it have to only be in one system? Or does that central repository act as the switching station for all of this other information? I think that is the much better option. And I can extend that into, again, file storage and things like that. Uh, 
I don't put them in one place, but now I can access them from one place. And yeah, it does take a little bit more work. It's not just this magic, put it in one thing, all of a sudden it shows up everywhere, you know, as most corporate platforms will tell you. Um, it does take some cur curation. It does take some care and feeding. But I think if you do that with a plan, you can have a system then that really works well for you. Well, and that made me thought on one thing that I do not do, but I have recommend to clients who wants to build this repository of web articles and web information and is an application called Instapaper. And mm -hmm. you can go click, it will save you the text and you can then sort in folders at Nasium forever. And they will always be there and you will be able to open the application and search art and it will show you everything that has that keyword. So that's another, I don't particularly do it. I re-Google uh, and I, after I have re-Googled you twice, I copy the text and goes to notes because that means it's a key article that I want to review. So that's another option that is very important. But, it, but again, what this thing is important to me is what happened if your platform change and i tell the story of a recent client who they this client live on a pc world has been using a mac since the beginning of their employment with this company and corporate just changed the policy blocking the mac okay now macs are not allowed you can only use your issued PC. And this person called me and said, I'm quitting my job. Okay, I'm done. I'm out of here by Friday. I said, hold on, hold on. Before you, and it's a person who likes the job that he does. It's just don't like that PC. That is fine. But instead, what we did was we pulled the iPad. Okay. And because bring your own device is allowed as far as it's not a computer. So an iPad is good. A phone is good. A MacBook is not. Try to understand that from an IT perspective. I could not. Okay. But regardless, what we did was we set up this person with an iPad Pro, move everything from the Mac to the iPad. Okay. And it was funny because this person called me later and said, I should have listened to you. I should have done that a long time ago. I don't miss my Mac at all. And Given, I understand this person is in a level with most of what it does, the iPad is a fantastic fit for, great. But this is something that is important. These things happen. I had a client who happened the opposite, okay? They were, he loved his Android phone. He loved his Chromebook. And the school uh, decided to change all the devices. So they went from iPhone and Macs from Androids. Okay. It happens, okay? except that his world was on the other platform. And it was how, forget about learning to use the different issues between the two platforms, is all my world has been in this other platform for so many years and finding the equivalence on what was possible to find the equivalence, okay? There were some, obviously, that it was very easy to do, but not everything was easy to do. And this person find themselves into the problem that, okay, I now need to use this new platform and I can't move everything as I had it. And not all the information that I have collected over the years move that easy so these things happen and this is where this information is valuable you know i used to have six or seven drawers of files i have three now okay. why because everything else has been scanned if the only stuff that i still have is the stuff that is unscannable okay because i need to have the paper physical version of other than that it's been a scan and destroyed. So 
where can or how can you make these decisions and what are your criteria? And so I always tell criteria are very, very, very personal. This is not about anybody else. This is about what works for you. What is going to be, where is going to be the device that you are going to think to find this information? And one of the things that I've been found in more and more as a productivity consultant and coach is we used to have the laptop as the primary device. And that primary device changed around five years ago for the phone. For most, the, most of the people that I work with, their main device is not the laptop, even that they carry the laptop everywhere. Their main device is their phone. And they don't use it more and better because they have not a stop to consider this is my main device and I need to find a way to use it better. It's not because the phone is not capable. It's not because it's because they have not a stop and think. And I had a client, and I will stop talking after this, who we move or I move, okay, from a PC to a Mac. We've been working multiple times over the years to an iPad, and I just moved them out of the iPad. It was a very easy transition, yes. But I moved them out of the iPad to the phone. He bought a keyboard. We put some magnets on the back of the keyboard because he wanted to have a larger keyboard. And what he travels is with the phone and a keyboard that he can put in there so he can comfortably you know, type. He didn't want a folding one. He want a full-size keyboard. So we find some solution for him. and. It works great for him. And he stopped traveling with everything else. Just carry the phone. So a couple of things that you mentioned here that kind of jumped out at me. Um, one, just wanted to touch on the whole Mac support thing. I think that it's an excellent illustration of the challenge that you get into with multiple tools is that every one of those tools has to be supported. And IT departments will often, you know, knock out well you're not going to use chromebooks you're not going to use max mm -hmm. not so much of the fact that they don't like the tech it's that it's one more platform and Correct. all the things that come along with that platform that have to be supported in their environment and in a business environment it really only has one job and that's to keep everything running i mean it's not optimization it's not best use it's none of that stuff it's keep the lights on keep the power flowing keep the screens right. lit um, the second part is about this legacy support idea of, of something that you can keep going time after time, regardless of the platforms. And I know a lot of old school developers who will tell you, yeah, I keep my task list in a text file. I keep every all my notes in a text file. Why? Because it doesn't matter what I use. Well, yeah, you're right. It doesn't matter what you use, but you're also then setting yourself to the point of finding the lowest common denominator over the greatest period of time. Well, that lowest common denominator is also the lowest set of functionality. So you're giving up functionality to establish a legacy path for this information. And I think in many cases we've seen, it's it's a rare platform anymore. Not that goes away, but that goes away and you lose everything. Now, it may not be the easiest thing to get stuff out of a particular platform, but I had, there aren't too many that just disappear and take everything with them. I mean, there, there may be some effort to get stuff out of there, but you can do that. Now, you're right. Looking at a tool to say, what's my exit plan for this tool is the absolute smartest thing you can do from day one. However, I don't think it should totally exclude, you know, if not every tool you have has a perfectly clean exit plan. Uh, yeah, that's kind of the way, I mean... I hate to be pragmatic about it, but they're really not looking to provide you easy ways to leave. <laughs> they want you to stay around. Uh, but one of the things that, that intrigued me a little bit about what you were saying about this primary device shift from PCs and laptops over to the phone is I think people should start to, to plan and build around not having a primary device assuming 
that their information is going to be accessible on multiple devices, in multiple platforms, in multiple ways. If if you don't do that, it's going to be one of those situations where, hang on, there we go. Um, it's going to be one of those situations where you're you're kind of locking yourself in again. So if you're building all of your information stores and your access and your functionality around this new primary, which happens to be your phone instead of your laptop, well, what happens when the new primary becomes, I don't know, VR goggles? But if you're always looking at your information to say, yeah, I could access it from three different places at any given time. Well, now you've you've put a set of rules around it to make sure that one, it's formatable, two, it's accessible, three, it's repeatable, uh, four, it's consistent. I mean, you have all of these criteria now that you start. And yes, it does exclude some things like it, it excludes platform specific applications. So, for example, there's a plat there's a tool on Windows that I love for the longest time. It's a mind mapping tool called FreeMind. And FreeMind's available on a couple of different platforms, but it's very much, you know, it's not a browser-based application. So that means that I'm not going to be able to access it on my tablet. I can't access it on my phone. I can't access it on my Chromebook. I can't access it through VR goggles. I mean, it has limits very, very quickly. So I think if if one of the criteria you include in your mix is this idea of platform agnosticism say look i want this to work wherever i need to be able to get to it and wherever the platforms go now you can start to think about that dynamic a little bit where it may be that i can't take a tool and get it onto another platform but maybe i can provide that reference to that tool in my primary one and i want to touch on something you mentioned earlier about the passwords I too use a password manager. I think everyone should use a password manager. Um, I think we're going to see even more and more, you know, this switch to pass keys. Um, I had several instances of it today where the pass keys were talking to my phone and talking back and no password did I enter or look up. That's not going to be the case for a long time. We're going to see lots of applications for a long time that have passwords. I do not put my passwords in my central repository. However, what I'll do is I'll have a field that says username and password. And the only thing that goes in there is an icon that's a key. And that indicates to me that that information is over in that password manager. That's all I need to know. I don't need right. that password in my central repository. I need to know where to go find it. And I think that's the most important aspect we can look at these. If we're looking at a central tool... The central tool should not necessarily be the holder all thing of all things, but it should be the keeper of all truths. And if those truths mean that the document is stored in Google Docs and the passwords in LastPass and your photos are in Google Images or Google Photos, great. I still only have one place that I have to go to figure out where all that stuff is. So the question I have now is, is this a better answer than depends? Or we just dig deeper in depends? Well, I don't know that it, the depends answer to the question is kind of a, it's kind of a cop out. Because it means that I don't know enough about what's going on. I don't know enough about your requirements to give mm -hmm. you any sort of specific guidance. And I don't think we have we have to do that anymore. The answer is really use the tool that is applicable for what you need to do with that information. So, for example, if it's files, files you need to be able to store and you need to be able to recall and you need to be able to organize. Use a tool that does that. If there's a layer on top of that, that means that you need to be able to have them accessible in multiple locations. 
Well, that narrows down the tool set that fits that criteria. So while it might feel like depends, it's actually a focus on need. You know, for example, I've got a 22 terabyte hard drive sitting next to me. And that 22 terabyte hard drive is absolutely useless when I'm out on the road, unless I remote into my machine and then access it that way. So when I look at that kind of dynamic, I have to say, what information should go on that drive? It's not a depends, it's what's that thing's purpose? What's its job that I'm expecting it to do for me? And I think that's where we get into the biggest hangup is we look at tools and we don't give them specific jobs. They just are there and we're going to find ways to make them do things and see how many different things we can make them do. Well, give them a job first, let them do the job. And once they do the job, then you can play around with it to do other things. But that I believe is a far better answer than it depends. The answer is really what do you need to do? What do you need to do? And what do you need to make things accessible? Well, there is one more point that I want to bring before we close. And it's, I understand the shiny factor. Okay. Oh, well, maybe I can find a piece that, and I can ask and I can get to the consultant and get to my friend. I can get to the Tiki techie friend that I have and find something new. But also keep into consideration what is your technology reality? Are you really the person who wants to spend seven hours moving because the software didn't work or the software, you find a new shiny thing or you want something maybe more basic, but that is going to allow you to move and forget about it. So that is also very important to think about it and to be very, very aware about it. Yeah, the, the most important part, I believe, and this is, and we should do an episode in the future talking about choosing your central repository, choosing the tool that you want to use as that core. Uh, I have to go back to the, the core thing is that that central repository, you should be able to do 80 to 90% of, of that capability on paper. You should be able to keep indexes of where stuff is and keep indexes of, if you can do that, if you can think through that, the central repository tool will work for you. You're mm -hmm. going to be able to, because then you just have to figure out how the tool itself works. But if you can't figure out what you need to keep track of and how you need to access it, that tool's not going to do it. It's like the classic thing I tell people with most productivity platforms is they will, they will do an extremely good job as to telling you how dysfunctional your system actually is. They, they reveal everything warts and all, and you have to go through that exercise and, and think it through. So we started off the beginning of the show with, can you have a single tool for all things? Uh, I don't think we've said no, but I also don't think we've said yes either. Right. And I hate to say it, but it goes back to, it depends. Well, and that may be the, the title for, for this episode, or at least a subtitle for this episode. In the meantime, follow us where you like to listen to podcasts, like us or subscribe to us and leave us a review. You know, remember, we live in Personal Productivity Club where you there's a channel there for cross-platform where we sometimes go more into this discussion and even show more stuff there. Um, but thank you for listening. In the meantime, we're Gusto Pinot and Argel Weeks and see you next time from your favorite device or any device. <laughs>